Viri Sun and Sky gives you a very simple way to resemble real world Sun and Sky as you move and position Viri Sun in your scene depending on its height and angle, its color and intensity and the sky's color and intensity will adjust to give you a realistic looking Sun and Sky. Hey folks, welcome to Mograph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course V-Ray 5 Masterclass, your complete guide to V-Ray 4 3ds Max. It's a massive 15 plus hours course in which we explore all the aspects of V-Ray 4 3ds Max thoroughly. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the description. Also, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You can create a V-Ray Sun right from the commands panel or as always from V-Ray toolbar. So, from the V-Ray toolbar, select V-Ray Sun. You can start creating V-Ray Sun from any view that you want. I prefer to start in the top view that allows me to decide on the direction of the sun. So click and drag in the top view. When you are done, Viri asks you whether to add a Viri Sky environment map or not. And in most cases, like now, you should say yes, as we want to use Viri Sun in combination with the procedural Viri Sky texture. Obviously, you can use Viri Sun with any other HDRI map if you wish. Now, we have a Viri Sun in our scene. And if I press 8, you notice a Viri Sky map is defined as our environment map, which is linked to the Viri Sun. And as we adjust the position of the sun in the scene, the sky texture will change to match that position. For example, if we place the sun down close to the horizon line, the sky will become much darker. And if we put it quite high in the sky, the sky will become much bluer. Sidebar. If you want to use V-Ray Sky within a dome light to take advantage of the adaptive dome feature for interior shots, you can simply create a V-Ray dome light and instance that V-Ray Sky texture to the dome light texture and that's it. Now, as long as you have that dome light in your scene, the environment map here will be ignored and V-Ray will prioritize the dome light. The result will be the same, but as we'll learn about adaptive dome feature in V-Ray dome light, you will get faster renders for your interior shots. We talk about this later on when discussing interior lighting. For now, let's delete the dome light. Now, let's run the IPR. So this is what we get. Before doing anything, go to the modify panel and let's change this sky model to this improved option. It results in more realism, generally speaking. Right now, because the sun sits on the horizon line, as you can see from the front view, we get a very dark sky close to sunset or sunrise. If I grab the sun and push it below the horizon line, we kind of start to get a much darker sky, almost night, right? And at some point, the light will start to die out. And that's where you need to rage, rage against the dying of the light. Okay, get it? Oh, okay, now let's start moving the sun above the horizon line. Now you can see we start to get some nice sunshine. Now, let me quickly go to the second camera where we can clearly see the horizon line and make sure the IPR is running. And now move the sun in the top view so we can see it in the render as well. Now, if we start kind of moving the sun up and down, you can see how the color and intensity of the sun and the sky changes as we move the sun lower or higher in the sky. Now, if I lower it very close to the horizon line, we get a very orange sun. And if I move it even lower, the sun will kind of start to disappear and the sky will become completely dark. And as we start to move it higher and higher, we get a bluer sky and a brighter sun. So basically from sunset or sunrise to noon. Cool. For now, let's get back to our first camera and make sure we are rendering from that one.
and let me quickly align the sun to this helper dummy that is a bit closer to the bench. I can come to the top view and start changing the direction of the sun as well in the sky. Let's move it right behind this tree. And get this nice soft shadows. Or we can probably place it to the other side of our scene and lower it a bit to get a very different feel. So you can adjust both the angle of the sun and its height in the sky to get what you want. For now, let me align it to the second helper dummy that is closer to the tree so we can see the sun disk in the render. And um, now we can probably start to look at some of the parameters in the V-Ray sun. Uh, now, before that, I think the image looks a bit too saturated. So let's open up the layers panel in the VFB add a hue saturation adjustment and decrease the saturation by 0.1. Now this looks better. Now as always we are using ACES so make sure to provide the correct config file as we learned before. Now first we can control the properties of our sun using the sun parameters. You can turn the sun on and off using this enable checkbox. When it is disabled the sky texture will still affect the scene. Intensity multiplier controls the intensity or brightness of the sun. If increased to something like 3, you can see the sun gets a lot brighter. And if set to something like 0.2, it gets a lot darker. One is the physically accurate value. Uh, we are rendering the scene through a very physical camera with proper exposure adjustments. If you are rendering your scene through a perspective view which is not recommended at all or if you are rendering through a camera without proper exposure adjustments, you get an extremely bright blown out render when you first add a V-Ray sun and sky which might tempt you to decrease the intensity of the sun. Uh, do not do that, just make sure your camera is properly exposed like in real world photography. For now let's get back to our sun. A uh, size multiplier affects two things, the size of the visible sun and the sharpness of its shadows. If I increase the size multiplier to something like 5, you can see the sun disk gets bigger and the shadows getting diffuser. Let's set the size to something like 10. Now even bigger with more diffuse shadows. Maybe try 20. And this one looks nice and dreamy. Now let's set it back to 1 as it is the physically accurate value. This option kind of gives you more artistic control over the final look. Filter color changes the color of the sun based on the color mode. So when the color mode is set to filter and I alter the filter color, let's select the kind of hot pink color. You can see the color of the sun is shifted towards this particular color. You can experiment with other color modes and other filter colors, but they are rarely used in general. For now, let's change the filter color back to white. Next, we have these very important sky parameters to control the look of the sky. Now, let me stop the IPR and make sure we are rendering from our second camera. And lock the view to render again as well. We can move the sun again to see it in the camera view and lower the sun in the sky quite close to the horizon line. The first thing you need to decide regarding the look of the sky is the sky model you choose. These sky models determine the procedural model to generate very sky texture. We have five models, uh, Prism, CIE Clear, CIE Overcast, Tozic, and improved. In most cases, this improved model will give you the most realistic results. Now, if I start lowering the sun even more, we get this beautiful sunset look. The sun becomes this beautiful orange. The sky becomes darker with this beautiful and realistic range of colors, which is only achievable if you are using the improved model. And if I switch to the 
Hozek model, which is the next best thing, you immediately lose all of that. Now let's get back to the improved model. You notice when using this improved model, some of these parameters like turbidity and ozone are grayed out. We take a look at them with other models later on. Now ground albedo determines the color of the ground in the sky texture. As I change the ground albedo color, you can see the color of the ground is changing in the sky texture. And it obviously affects the overall illumination of the Cinetad as well. Let's change it to that dark gray with the value of 51. Blend angle controls the size of the gradient formed by the very sky between the horizon and the actual sky. The default value is 0.5 and as I increase it to 1, 5 or 10 for example, this gradation becomes more gradual and if I decrease it to maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.1 and 0, it becomes less and less. For now, set it back to 0.5. And horizon offset lets you to offset the horizon line in the sky. For now, let's set it back to zero. We can also stop the render. I'm gonna align the sun with the helper object closer to the tree and get back to our first camera and make sure we are rendering from that camera and locking it as the view to render. A very welcome addition to Viri VFB would be the ability to choose the camera to render right from the VFB like Arnold. Now let's change the model to Hosek and take a look at this turbidity and ozone parameters. Turbidity controls the amount of pollution, dust, and particles in the sky. Lower values like 2 would result in a cleaner sky, and as you increase this value to something like 5, 7, or 10, you can see the sky gets more polluted. The max value here is 10 and the minimum value is 2. Let me put it back to 2.5, which is the default value, so we can get our clear sky back. Uh, next we have this ozone which controls the color of the sunlight. By default it's set to 0.35 and you can alter this value from 0 to 1. At 0 you get a bit more of a yellowish orangish tone and at 1 you would get a cooler and bluer sunlight. It's hard to notice but if I right click in the VFP and enable real zoom and zoom in on these leaves here. Now if I set the ozone value to 0 you can clearly see that a warmer yellower tone and if set to one it kind of gets a bit cooler and bluer. Let me disable real zoom and change the model to improved which should be your go-to choice. If you don't want to see the sun disk itself for composition or compositing in post purposes you can make it invisible right from here. We have effect diffuse and effect specular options like the other very lights. And the last option we have is this cast atmospheric shadows and to see how this work we need to add some fog to the scene so press 8 to open up the environment and effects window. Under the environment tab come down to the atmosphere section and add a very environment fog. Set the fog distance to around 400-500 centimeters. And increase the fog height to around 100 centimeters. When cast atmospheric shadows is turned on, you can feel the heavy fog in the scene casts a darker shadow all over. For now, let me deactivate the environment fog and move up the sun a tad. Just a quick tip here, if you open up the layers panel and enable your lens effect and maybe increase the bloom a bit to 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 
we kind of get this nice bloom and glare around the sun which can add to the realism of your render you can obviously do the same thing in post if you remember at the start of this lesson when we added a V-Ray Sun, uh, V-Ray asked us to add a V-Ray Sky Texture to the environment as well. We said yes back then, but we could have said no. In that case, we can add that texture manually. If I open up the Material Editor, uh, let's right click and add a V-Ray Sky Texture from V-Ray Maps. We could simply instance the sky texture into the environment, then enable the specify sun node option and click on the sunlight button to pick the sunlight that the sky texture will be connected to and adjusted accordingly. But V-Ray did that automatically for us, so we don't have to do it. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com or our Gumroad page at gumroad.com slash mographplus and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3DS Max, Maya, Arnold, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift, Octane and so on. See you in the next video.